Hi everyone, Wismerilly here. Today I want to talk about snapshotting on the Sorcerer class on Ball Lightning for the Abattoirs of Zir speed farming and pushing. I want to show you what powers you need to snapshot, how you want to snapshot. Yes, I'm looking at you, uh, Amulet, holding the Mage Lord's aspect, like you, you want to uh, swap that from the Amulet and not from the chest armor or anywhere else, like I've seen it done in uh, other um, streams. And I want to explain what it is about what uh, legendary powers you want to swap, uh, which vampiric powers you want to swap, and which key passives and others you want to swap. Let's begin by the um, legendary powers. Um, in the current iteration of the best ball lightning, speed farming and pushing variants for the Abattoir of Zir, there are only two uh, legendary powers that are worth swapping, that are working actually with snapshotting. And those two are the uh, Veers, the Mage Lord chain, the, the Mage Lord legendary power, I mean, and the uh, legendary of elements. Those two are the ones that you do want to swap because you will gain up to 40.5% damage reduction by doing the swap on the Mage Lord, <clears throat> and you would gain 60% a 60 damage multiplier when the uh, element's buff is up. So it's up only half of the time. Therefore, you will gain a 30% damage multiplier. So you will get this uh, 60% instead of a 30% when you go for the normal version. So uh, how does the snapshotting works? Well, first let me introduce by saying it's a bug. We're just exploiting a bug. Let's just face it, right? Because when you enter a dungeon, this place is a dungeon, the Abattoir of Zir is a dungeon, um, any nightmare dungeon and non-nightmare dungeon is a dungeon, so when you enter an area where it's all about fighting, your um, buffs are snapshots, like a picture is taken of everything you have, and some of them are bugged in a way that you can remove something that you normally have, but guess what? The picture was taken when you entered the dungeon, and therefore, even if you remove it, you're still considered to have it. Let's start with the Veer's Mastery Key Passive and the Mage Lord um, Legendary Power. So you can see over here that at the moment I have... Um, I'm too close to the enemies. Yeah, there we go. When I'm not near any enemies, I have 23.7% damage reduction. It comes from the 20% from Shaco and the 4.6% damage reduction that I have as an affix on my amulet, right? So this equals 23.7% because those are multiplicative to each other. Now, if I get close to three enemies, here it will say you gained the Mage Lord uh, power, and here there will be an icon to tell me how many uh, close enemies are near me, right? So let's move on. Gained Mage Lord, can you see that? And if I move away and move close, gain Mage Lord. So this is what you're looking to have, and the icon I was talking about is this one with the number three. Here I have two close enemies, maybe those two, and if I move a little bit over there, I have three enemies that are close. So when I have three enemies that are close, those 20, how much was that, 24% that I had before is going to be multiplied by the damage reduction of 40.5% from the legendary power that I have on the amulet here, and the result is 54.6%. 20% times uh, the damage reduction from 4.6% times the damage reduction from 40.5% and all that equals 54.6%. This is all normal. There is no bug here, right? Because I have the Veer's Mastery equipped and I have the Mage Lord Legendary equipped. Now, let's have some fun. Let's remove the Veer's Mastery key passive. So at this stage, I should not have access to this, and let's just completely remove the legendary power. Let's move and let's check our damage reduction, 20%. That's the 20% from the Shaco. Everything normal so far. If I move close to the enemies, 
I just gained Mage Lord Legendary Power and have three enemies nearby. Ha! Huh. So this is one of the bugs. We a picture was taken when you had your key passive and your legendary power equipped, and it is persisting, it is remaining, even though you don't have the key passive and the legendary power anymore. So this here confirms that you have it, you have your 40. 0.5% damage reduction when there are three enemies near you, which is huge, by the way. And it is a lot more than having 27% damage reduction when it is equipped on a helm, on a chest armor, or on pants. So please, do this trick with the uh, power equipped on an amulet. You will jump from 27% damage reduction to 40.5% damage reduction. That's a 50% increase. That's huge. So please do it on the amulet. Um, the tooltip is bugged. Like, I believe the buff here is correct. It was snapshot. You still have it. But the tooltip, for some reason, is bugged. Like, it's only showing the 20% instead of the 54%, uh, I believe that was. So the tooltip is known to have some bugs. But by seeing that, the you just gained the Mage Lord. This, attends, wait. That gained Mage Lord and having three enemies nearby. I tend to believe that it works, that you gain this 40.5% damage reduction. Right, so that was for uh, the Mage Lord. So when you do this swap, equip your next... Um, you just need to have a shitty amulet with the maxed out uh, legendary power imprinted on it. Doesn't matter what the rest of this says because you're going to swap it back to your DPS or to your best in slot, should I say, amulet. And in my case, it's uh, this one with uh, damage reduction when injured. The armor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that amulet, actually, because I'm not going to run the armor anymore. Mana cost and cooldown reduction. Right. So, just do a swap. You enter the dungeon. You swap from the uh, Mage Lord amulet to the Storm Swim amulet. Well, you remove first the key passive, and then you do the swap to your DPS amulet. That's the first thing you want to do. Second thing, the second power that everyone is um, snapshotting is this one. It's also bugged. Not all the powers can be snapshot, let me tell you that. Disobedience cannot, a few others cannot. I did some tests. I didn't test every single one because, hey, I'm not, a, I'm not a beta tester. I mean, I'm not, I'm not paid to basically debug Diablo 4. I just do it like as a hobby. So I'm not going to do everything, but some of them don't work. Most of them don't work and only a few work. And the few includes Mage Lord and the Elements, among others, I'm sure, but I didn't test everything. And this one, look, so I entered the dungeon with a 60% damage multiplier to a set of uh, damage. Let's look at um, damage with a physical damage, because that's the easiest one. See, 60%. My uh, damage is normally uh, 100%. I mean, I, I don't have any uh, boosts to it, so it's the regular 100% that is hidden. And when the convention of elements, that's what I'm going to call that thing over here, switches to physical, I get the 60% damage multiplier, right? Now, you don't want to be running with this thing as a two-hander, so we're going to swap it to this one, which is the, um, what's it called again? The codex version, the lowest possible version that you can imprint on it, right? It's a 20% damage multiplier, and we're going to replace a 60% with a 20%. Let's do it. Ta-da. And now, guess what? I still benefit from this 60% because, like I said, a picture was taken when you entered this dungeon and the 60% was on that picture. And now you just change the power, but you still have access to the one that was uh, uh, taken as a picture in the first place. So you still have, uh, we care about lightning. When this is switching to lightning, there we go, 350 2.8% uh, additive uh, bucket damage because this 60% is multiplying uh, this and it works with a ball lightning, right? Now, let me give you another tip you because you want to do the snapshotting right, okay? Like you enter with this and since, since it's on a two-hander, you will have to replace this two-hander with a weapon and an offhand, right? And in my case, I specifically um, imprinted an offhand to just show you the mistake that can be done. If you swap first 
the weapon, which is in my case doesn't hold the uh, element's power, look at what happens. I lose the buff. And then if the second thing I equip is this one, I regain the buff and I lose the snapshot. Because right now what I have is a 20% damage multiplier here. So be extremely careful when you do the swap. If this element power is imprinted on your ring or on your gloves, in case you're not running the Feast of Fate, um, then that's fine because you'll be changing it and you won't lose it. But if it's one of the two powers of your weapon and offhand, be extremely careful because if you do it wrong, you're going to ruin what you just did, the snapshot that is. And look at that, it's even worse. Like it can be 20%. I re-equip, I did snapshot a 20%. So when I equip a 60%, I'm still stuck with the 20%. So I have to uh, completely remove the power, see, 20%. I have to completely remove it, equip the two-hander to have a 60%, and then from the two-hander, equip the 20% to keep the 60% up, and then equip my weapon. So those are the two swaps that you want to be, the two snapshots that you want to be doing when it comes to legendary power. In the current uh, meta, of the ball lightning speed farming and pushing uh, variants, you're running a, a damage reduction while injured version, which is going to have the uh, Shaco, the raiment of the infinite, either the inner calm of the fists of fate, um, and then for the pants, it's not disobedience, I'm going to swap that, it's going to be ever living. Uh, exploiters on the boots, you want to have damage reduction while injured over there. An amulet with damage reduction while injured, no more uh, armor rolls, I'm going to change that, I'm going to change uh, my planners. Uh, the conceded ring over there, the Tal Rasha, um, the storm swell, and then the elements and the gravitational. That's what you're looking to have. Instead of the inner calm, you can have, I know Norse War is playing the, um, what's it called again? The one that's giving you a 40% additive critical strike chance. You can run that instead. But anyway, I digress, as always. Um, so those are the two legendary powers that you want to snapshot. Now, in terms of key passive, you want to snapshot the Veer's Mastery. And what you switch to is interesting. For pushing, I still believe overflowing energy is the way, but for speed farming, I'm going to iterate with the shatter version that I find very nice when you're speed farming. Because let's be honest, we all want to grind our uh, glyph, the tears of blood, and it's a lot more efficient to speed farm tier 14, tier 19 or tier 24 than just uh, speed farming those lower version. And I think Shatter, this reminds me so much of the area damage of Diablo 3. Uh, this is uh, what it's really to the core uh, doing, um, the numbers being different, but that, that's what it really is. Or we are just looking at our, what's it what was it called in season one? Uh, the barber. <laughs> this, my friends, is the uh, asset they reused when they did the barber in season one. They did a copy paste of the shutter uh, code and then they adjusted it to something a little bit different. But the barber of season one was coded from the shutter. That's how it went. Anyway, I digress. Um, so yeah, you have those two options. And on Monday, uh, jo you can join me on stream. I'm going to do a few uh, runs with the shutter. I really want to be speed farming tier 14. And then as I get better gear, tier 19, and possibly tier 24 with the Sorcerer. So that's what we'll be looking to do. So the second, um, long story short, the second thing you want to snapshot is a key passive. You want to go from Veer's Mastery for free to another one, right? Now, the last thing that you want to uh, snapshot is the Vampiric Power. So you enter a dungeon with this um, configuration. There are a few different things you can do, but this one is the standard one, right? With uh, Prey on the Week, Ravenous, uh, Accursed Touch, Resilience, or if you are um, tanky enough, you can swap Resilience for Feed the Coven for a 10% damage multiplier. And the one that you will be uh, s uh, snapshotting is the, the Infection. Infection says when you inflict damage eight times on a single enemy, then you're going to apply poison damage. So I think that's why you see only two over here. And uh, when you apply poison damage, you stack your, where are you? Tal Rasha Ring over there that can stack 
to four elements, fire, cold, lightning, and poison, thanks to the vampiric power. Whoops. Well, that I just removed. And um, you're going to benefit from 60% um, damage multiplier when these things get to uh, four. Right, so you have your vampiric power uh, snapshot. You're going to, the best way to do it is when you open the vampiric power, right click on the infection over there. Well, I, I stopped doing damage, but you have it equipped, you stack it up, this thing goes to four, you remove it, and on its place, while you're still dealing damage, you can equip either domination or anticipation. I think the, the most common one is domination, but anticipation can be it can have some use also to reduce the cooldown of unstable current. Most people will use uh, domination because of the 24% uh, damage multiplier on crowd control enemies, and that's the best in slot. Beware though, this thing can kill you. If you are injured and you are crowd controlled and you are damaged, this thing will kill you, which is very stupid. It's a bug, but anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. We're already exploiting some bugs by doing the snapshot. So uh, I digress, but just know that these things can kill you. So if you don't want it to kill you, maybe you're playing hardcore, just switch, switch to anticipation or maybe switch to feed the coven and uh, keep the resilience one. It is up to you. But what I'm trying to say is, once you deal damage, you don't need that anymore. You switch to domination and you keep doing damage to keep your Tal Rasha stacks up at all times. When the bosses will spawn at the end of the run, the stacks will fall off, so you have to do it again. You re-equip infection, start to deal damage on the bosses at the end of the run. Then once this is stacked up, remove infection, equip domination or whichever other power you like, close this and uh, just uh, just blast those uh, bosses, right? So those are, th those are the three very common snapshotting that you want to do. Legendary powers, um, vampiric power, and key passive. There's a last one that actually I will talk about, which is, where are you? Um, that one, ravenous. So if you have, you need to have boots, I, I don't have the correct boots, you need to have an implicit a prefix that says when you use evade, you gain 75% movement speed, and by having this uh, implicit plus 25% movement speed on the boots, you're going to have a 100% bonus movement speed after evading. This is going to max out your movement speed at 200%, and when your movement speed is maxed out at 200%, and the ravenous triggers, with you having 200% bonus movement speed, you're going to get the maximum bonus, which is 80% attack speed on this thing. So that's the last thing you want to uh, snapshot because look, when I trigger, uh, yes, when I trigger Ravenous, let's imagine that it's been triggered with 200% movement speed and it was 80%. And then my, uh, my evade uh, buff goes down. I'm back to 125% movement speed. Well, guess what? If I just refresh the buff by dealing damage, this thing here is going to keep uh, giving me 80% increased attack speed. See, it refreshes. So you're snapshotting the buff when you get it, and then you are doing damage to keep it up and refreshing it. That's the last snapshot I want to talk about, which is like more of a buff uh, bar snapshot, if I may say. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's all I had to, uh, to show you today when it comes to snapshotting. Uh, the, the meta build is the one that I'm going to share on Monday currently for pushing and speed farming with ball lightning on the sorcerer and the powers, the things you're looking to snapshot are Mage Lord, Elements, Veer's Mastery and Infection <coughs> and to some extent Ravenous. You want to snapshot that, then start your speed farming run or push run in the Abattoir of Zir. Anyway, this was Luis Muriel. I hope you find this video interesting. Join me on Monday because I want to iterate a lot over the Shatter Key Passive and see how far we can push a speed farming build on the Sorcerer class. Have a nice weekend and maybe see you on Monday.